Hey y'all, it's Molly with Mini Acres, and today is the first full farm and garden tour for 2021. Let's see what's growing, and let's talk about plans for the spring, plans for this year, and um, get comfy. It's probably going to be a long one. Something that I would like to do one day when it's warm is clean out this area, clean up this bed, and this little walkway and tidy it up again. Hopefully the chickens won't destroy it again. But that mint is coming back. There's some more mint that is just uh, surviving the winter pretty well. So we're in the greenhouse and what's the thermostats? It's been cold and windy and I really don't know how cold it has gotten in here. And I, you know, haven't thought ahead or really planned well to use the greenhouse um, and to tighten it up for the winter to keep it warmer in here, maybe in the future, but I also might just wind up making a little hoop house for that purpose. Here's the cassia bush that I cut back and brought in and it has still got green leaves on it. It seems to be pretty happy right here, so I'm really happy about that. I'm not sure if those mulberry trees are gonna make it. They don't look as happy as I had hoped. And, oh, hang on, I'll get to you in a minute, buddy. Still nothing really going on here with my pomegranate seeds. But I also just today planted some wild pear seeds. My husband brought me home these two little wild pears. They were about that big. And I just uh, saved the seeds from them. We don't know what the variety is. I don't know. Um, just, you know, why not stick it in the ground and see if they grow. I still haven't brought this cup inside. It's been out here for a long time. Let's see what else we got. There's still green on these pepper plants that I brought in. So hopefully they'll still overwinter and be able to be planted out again in the spring. My little fig tree still has some little buds on it. He still seems happy. Lemon tree has perked back up. It's not nearly as yellow as it was. Still have the little pecan, baby pecan tree. So the cassia branches that I brought in to try to root, they didn't root. And honestly, I probably waited too late to bring them out here and put them in dirt and see if that helped. But, you know, it's worth a shot. So I just stuck them all in some dirt and we'll just go from there. And what else? There's some catnip hanging on and some stevia hanging on. So we'll see if that survives. And I just potted up the spearmint that I was... Um, rooting in the house, in the kitchen. So I'm gonna bring that back inside so that it can stay warm. I'm gonna wash these trays and get everything ready to start seeds. I'm trying to be a good proper gardener and sterilize and keep everything nice and clean and tidy so that I'll, uh, my future self will thank me for that. This Kimberly Queen Fern is very happy in here. Okay, so we're gonna try to go outside. This whole area over here, I have not shown y'all yet. I had talked about it. Um, I had lost some footage on it, but this is where we have um, many of our pets buried, which might seem kind of morbid, but Delilah, who recently passed away, that's where she's buried. And then over here, this is a whole area that I would like to get cleaned up and mulched really nicely and have some more um, perennials where my, my dad's ashes and his cat that I inherited are both right here. And so this doesn't look tidy right now, but I can envision it being a really nice little spot. Maybe put a bench out here too, where we can come and just sit and listen to the wind chimes and listen to nature and look out over the garden. So if you can imagine with me, this potentially being a really lovely spot. And here's another place where the leaves have just all blown away and uh, the cardboard and things like that that were underneath it are exposed. So I just need to tidy this up. Again, that's going to be a project for a warm day. And here I have a story to tell you about Fred. So we're going to uncover this and see what's going on. I haven't looked under here in about a week. And I didn't bring a bowl with me. I probably should have brought a bowl to do some harvesting. Um, that's right, Fred. 
I harvested a bunch of mustards that we ate on New Year's Day, so that was nice. So I'm gonna see what's growing under here and in my other covered spot. I'm gonna show y'all what has been surviving. We've had a few nights in the 20s, several nights in the 30s, but then days where it's like 60, 70, even 80 degrees during the day. So Florida winter weather is crazy. Okay, honey. This is growing for sure. What I'm really hoping is a lot of these brassicas will start growing when the weather gets warmer, that they'll just survive through the winter and then really take off in the spring before it gets too hot, that I'll still get to harvest some cabbages and stuff. This lettuce has bolted. That's interesting. This is kohlrabi and look, it's wanting to get kind of fat right there. So we're just gonna let that go and see what happens. The mustards have grown back. I see a giant leaf I missed the other day, but they're already putting on new leaves. There's some lettuce. These are some lucky chickens that are living right next to this bed, that's for sure. More kohlrabi that's still super skinny. Hoping, hoping for the best. Some little radishes. Don't mind all the weeds. I mean, that's just, that's just what we're doing here. We're just growing weeds with a few veggies in between. Oh look, some little French breakfast radishes are coming up. And more mustard greens. I hear the airplane. If I stopped recording every time an airplane went over, I would never record. What do we got here? Dino kale. I love dino kale. Uh, this one seems to be the only one that's getting really big right now. Some arugula. That looks like arugula, even though it's labeled giant noble spinach. <laughs> okay, look at the peas. In amongst all the weeds are some peas. They're getting pretty long. And this little guy, look at him. Some red sail lettuce. He's a champ. He's doing really good. So the reason that Fred and two of his favorite ladies are living in this little chalet is because Fred was removed from his throne. He was overthrown by his son, Little Fred. Not Fred Jr., who I loved, who died of suspicious causes, but by Little Fred, who was a scrawny little pain in the neck guy. I'll show him to you in a minute. But apparently he's grown a little, he's gotten some gumption, and he overthrew his father's kingdom. So Fred was all alone he's over in the corner. Fred's such a good rooster. And I could not have him go out like that and be shamed or exiled from his kingdom. So he is here in this little confinement area with two of his favorite ladies, Ruby. Actually, Fred and Ruby are both at least seven years old. And the other Ruby, I, I don't know how old she is. She's actually more of a, I think she's actually a Rosie, which means her mom and dad are either a Buff Orpington or a Rhode Island because I had roosters and hens of both of those breeds for a while. And so don't know who her mom and daddy are. But anyway, those are two of his favorite girls. So they're over here just having a peaceful life right next to the garden. I don't know how long this is going to last. I don't know how long I'm going to keep them over here. But this was a pretty easy setup. I was able to do this by myself, which is pretty remarkable considering I've mentioned being kind of a tiny weakling woman. I was able to take cattle panels and zip tie them together, put chicken wire around it and some plastic over it, and just make a secure little spot for them where they're happy enough. I still need to come over here and just pull up stuff that's dead over here, but I haven't. Garlic is doing great. So when we had some pretty crazy windstorms, you can see that this fabric got torn. So what I'm going to do is use some wire to make some I'm going to put down a new piece of um, row cover so that this stuff is protected. And I'm going to show y'all what's under here, and then I'll show you after I redo it. Little baby carrots. And then look at all of this lettuce yumminess. Ignore the ant bed. 
I'm ignoring them for now. That big old arugula over there. Ignore that hot mess I still haven't dealt with. So I'm going to harvest some of this lettuce so that it keeps growing. So the bunnies will be excited today to get another handful of lettuce. Here's my store-bought garlic. It is looking pretty good. So what even is this? What do we got here? So this is some sort of baby cabbages. Little baby kohlrabi. What are you? Radicchio. Lettuce mix. Rutabaga. Let's see. What are you? I don't know what you are. My clothespin labels <laughs> have failed me. Um, I think these are radishes of some sort. So I'm going to make me some little hoops out of wire and get this covered back up and then I'll show y'all what it looks like. Here is the bowl of lettuce I picked. There's a tiny bit of dino kale and some mustard greens on the bottom of the bowl, but the rest is a mix of different kinds of lettuce. So that is a pretty nice harvest for today. So now I'm going to cut this wire. So my husband happened to already have whatever gauge of wire this is that is the same as if you buy the pre-cut wire that you can use to make little row covers, um, the little hoop covers or whatever they're called, you know. So I've got these little wire cutters here and I'm just going to make maybe five or six pieces. And I can't hold this and film at the same time, so use your imagination. <laughs> so I ended up cutting four pieces of wire, and I was able to still use that same piece of, of row cover. Um, I just stretched it out and found where it was torn, and it was actually just the right length. There's still that little hole you see flapping. But I'm going to get some tape and tape that up and we'll be fine. We'll be good to go. Moving on, let's go visit the geese and the chickens. All right. Hey, bud. I didn't bring you a snack. Here, you can have some of this. I'm glad the sun came out, but it is still 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is Celsius, but y'all can laugh at me all you want. But that is too cold for Florida, and the wind is blowing, and my nose is running. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, let's do some snacks. Actually sitting down in this corner. <laughs> Calm down. I'm cooking a butternut squash and a spaghetti squash today so I just gave them all the seeds from that and then I also gave them some timothy hay. The geese really like eating the leftover bunny hay and since geese can basically live off of grass that's been really helpful for them over the winter. So sitting here in this corner, I don't know how well you can tell, but here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do pretty soon. There's only a few little weeds here that I need to dig up, but this, I don't know if you can see, like this section, I feel like it's just about ready that I can go ahead and make market style beds um, just at this front, this top portion of this area. You can see we can go all the way over here. There's still quite a bit of area, and honestly, it's just too much for me to imagine trying to make that many beds all at once. Um, I think this is just going to be developed over, hopefully over the spring and summer. I'll just keep adding beds and planting as I go. Hi, Mabel. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Look. That's him. 
That's little Fred. Look at his little jerk face. He has fattened up a little bit. And apparently now he's a man. He thinks this is his flock. Hi. Marie's been laying me an egg at least every other day. And Toulouse is such a good guard goose. He actually will chase anyone out of here that isn't me. I'd like to introduce you to all the different chickens that are named. But these two <laughs> won't hush. See their two janky coops over there? That is on the plans to build a nice, big, fancy chickshaw. That's what I'm, I'm hoping that'll happen in the next month or two. Hi. All right, so... <laughs> Guys, uh, so before I show y'all the other chickens, I want to show y'all a sketch. Um, my husband and I have been looking at our plans for this year or for the future and basically sketch the property out. And so I think it would be useful to take a look at that. So we'll go inside for a minute and get my lips on numb how oh, rusty you need your own video don't you we'll do that later okay let's see if i can show you this so this is north and let's see if we can see the orientation so we just came in from the garden that's where the geese and all are and also keep in mind this is not to scale by any stretch okay here's the house Here's the greenhouse shed. So some things that we want to do, right now our driveway goes like right here. So we are wanting to make this a driveway, but we need like a lot of whatever it is that you do to make a nice solid driveway that doesn't wash away. Like I don't even know what the stuff is, like crushed asphalt and all that kind of stuff. And culverts because there's hills and things like that. Anyway. This is where we want our driveway to be. This is where I walked down in the 12 acre tour um, where you could see that like there's some really pretty trees. It's actually a really nice little path. But that's gonna be the future driveway. So here's the house and the carport. So one of the most important things that I wanna do first is have a fence that is secure for the dogs. They keep sneaking out under different spots in the fences, and so um, they'll follow us down the road if they're outside while we, when we leave the house. And so that's just not safe. We just want to make them more secure. So what I want to do is connect a fence here and have this be where there'll be a gate. There's a fence. Whoops. The fence right now that runs along here actually kind of goes like that to put a more secure fence that's more parallel to the house and then also put up a fence right here that connects to the garden and then this fence back here all of this would be secure fencing so that this would be where the dogs could go so that's where like this is where the trampoline is I don't know if you can envision that and then here's the raised beds Ideally, this is a great spot where I would like for us to move our bees. Well, we don't have any bees right now, but once we are able to start collecting hives again in the spring, that this is where we would put our bees. And let's see what else. And then also be able to put a fence across here and then a fence back here because right now, so we have a shed right here. I would like to make a smaller barn right here that would be ideal for raising baby chicks, potentially being a place like to milk goats and things like that in the future and have and store the things that I need because out in the big barn, I haven't shown y'all, but there 
there's just nowhere out there for, for my stuff, for gardening and farming and animal stuff, because this is full of my husband and my son's projects. They are into old trucks and cars, welding and all that kind of stuff is what goes on at the big barn. So I would like to have a smaller barn that's just for all of my smaller homesteading projects. And right now, back here is where the other chicken coop is that we're going to go back there in a minute. But this is where, ideally, my husband wants to get back into raising quail. And so he wants to put a run. I don't know how else to explain it, except that it's called a quail run. It might be called something else. But anyway, it's like a big netted area where he can have the quail because he wants to raise them to be able to release them back into the wild. Bobwhite quail are native to our area and for a long time, at least the last 20 years or so, we've noticed a decline in the population of the birds. And that's just been one of his passions is that he wants to help rebuild the wild population. Um, in addition to, you know, being able to raise them to eat and also when releasing them into the wild so that he also can continue to still hunt them because that's something that he enjoys doing. So it's sort of trying to replenish something, a resource that he um, also, you know, enjoys for recreation. So this shows like some potential areas of putting up fences and sort of kind of deciding what we're going to do next as far as like infrastructure. Like I said, the most important thing to me is getting the new fence put up for the dogs and the new driveway. I'm not sure which one would come first because I'm not sure how much each project is going to cost. We have to look at our budget and see what we can do first, if we're going to do anything this month or if it's going to have to wait till next month. But this is sort of like an overview of our property and sort of how we can like fence it off in different areas. Oh, and the other thing I was going to say too is potentially being able to have areas where there's goats or pigs or other animals as well. And like, like from here down to here is the creek. So there's a lot of wet area that also determines what we can and can't do as far as putting up fences. And I think that's, I also showed like where that, that power line cuts across our property right there too. That also like we can't build anything underneath that area. So maybe that makes sense. I don't know if that's helpful or not, if I made anything uh, clearer or more confusing. So let's go check on the ducks. I honestly don't know if I've shown y'all this space before. This is the north side of the house where we've got like tulips. There are some lilies that grow here that we got from my grandmother's house when she passed away. There's a hydrangea bush in there that needs to come up. This whole area needs to be cleaned out. That's a, I don't even know what it is. It was gifted to me from a friend of mine, some kind of elephant ear. This whole area, I need to clean out these beds, and what I would like to do is put a path from the front to the back of uh, pavers, so a nice little walkway. So this is kind of a really gross before, but one day, hopefully this will encourage me to show you a really cool after, right? Let's keep going. Projects from my fellas always working on something. This space is in bad need of some mulch. I would love to cover this in a thick layer of wood chips. John Ralphio. Fat Elvis. Y'all can't possibly be up to any good today. Little Elvis. Oh, I hear Sarah. She heard me. So you can see this area's been washed out a lot. And I feel like... <laughs> yep, you found me. I feel like this would be... Um, it would be really beneficial if I'm going to keep using this area for the chickens to, to put a deep mulch. Here's a lot of leaves. I guess we could just go and find more leaves and use that. But it would be really fantastic to have a really thick layer of wood chips. I'm going to refill the duck swimming pool. Hey guys. Hi. Hi Sarah. Hi Aunt Shirley. Diana Berry. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. 
this is the space where I had mentioned that my husband had raised quail. One of the places. And so he wants to be able to expand it to give them a flight pen. Flight pen. That's the word, right, Sarah? It's a flight pen. Hi. You want some pets? It's been a week since the turkey eggs should have hatched, and we're pretty much sure that it's not going to hatch at this point, so that's kind of a bummer. Hi, Sarah. Who's a good turkey? Who's a pretty turkey? Let's see if there's any eggs in the coop. So this is proof that it's cold in Florida when the chickens are staying in their coop. They say it is too cold to be outside. It's not even that cold, ladies. Hey, Priscilla. This actually used to be a playhouse that we converted into a chicken poop. Sweet girl. Fat Elvis. Hopefully I didn't forget anything, but I probably did. <laughs> but it is cold out here. My lips are numb. My nose is running. And like I said, I understand 40 degrees in Florida doesn't sound like it should be that cold, but it's pretty miserable. So I'm going to head back inside and get warm and look at my seeds and start looking at my plants so that I can start some seeds hopefully within the next week or so. I actually did just get some shop lights and we're getting them hung up on some shelves in my laundry room so I'll share that in a future video and I'm trying not to get ahead of myself trying not to start anything too early but at the same time I don't want to wait too late either. Because I can't trust my memory and I need to write everything down I have to see what needs to be started when because our last frost date is the end of March and that'll be here before we know it if the world keeps turning so so I'll share more about that in another video and I'm cold so I'm gonna go inside now and I'll see y'all later bye y'all